Hello and welcome back to OnChain Reaction. I'm your host James Bennett and I'm the CEO of ByteTree. Okay, let's jump right into it. So it's been a pretty exciting week with Bitcoin now trading at about $37,000. And today I'm going to run you through a number of different metrics on and off the chain relating to Bitcoin to help contextualize what might happen next uh, during this period. So we're going to start by looking at the investment flows uh, in and out of exchange traded products and closed ended funds. So since uh, the middle of May, we've seen about eight and a half thousand Bitcoin leaving these investment funds. And you can see that that's been happening in uh, unison with price. And um, our view is that the price of Bitcoin is made up at a high level uh, as a combination of the primary market and the secondary market. So the, the demand and supply for new Bitcoin being created um, and then the demand and supply for Bitcoin within the Bitcoin network economy. The investment funds is very much on the primary side as well as the sort of minor flows. Um, so, you know, ultimately the institutions have had a big part in bringing Bitcoin's price up to that $60,000 mark that we saw a few weeks ago and similarly are having an impact on the uh, fall in price that we're seeing today. Now, just to support that with some on-chain data, we can see the institutional participation rate has been falling. This is measured through one of the bike tree indicators called institutional dominance ratio. We look at the percentage of traffic that is attributable to the highest value uh, quintile or high value traffic that's taking place on the network. You can see here the, the blue line is a smoothed uh, version or sorry, a, a smooth trend line um, of the seven day moving average of that institutional dominance ratio. And similar to the fund flows, you can see how it trails off uh, from mid-May, now back at levels that we haven't seen since Q4 last year. Okay, uh, moving away from the sort of institutional participation and more broadly into what's happening on the Bitcoin network, this would be you know falling under the secondary market um, um, sector, uh, the daily settlement volume that we're seeing on, on Bitcoin, uh, and that's been falling really sharply um, as well from uh, the middle of uh, April, uh, really end of May, let's say, uh, until today. You can see again that that's back at levels that weren't seen since Q4 last year, um, sitting somewhere around the $5 billion per day, down from about $14 billion per day. So a significant uh, fall in activity. A uh, number of new Bitcoin addresses has also been falling. Uh, this data very helpfully presented um, from uh, Glassnode. Uh, the number of new addresses on the Bitcoin network on a seven day moving average has adjusted sharply downwards, uh, not quite to the level that we saw in December last year, um, as with the previous metrics, but you know, still falling significantly back to sort of February levels. Now, what's really interesting here, and I think I've pointed this out on the show before, is that if you look at the 1718 cycle, the increase in uh, number of addresses active on Bitcoin increased very sharply and then dropped off a cliff uh, as the bear market set in. Um, this time around, we've seen a steady increase in participation, which is very bullish for the longer term um, activity taking place on the network. And the, sh the sharp fall that we've seen has not been sort of vertical uh, as it was in 18, although you know it is a certain um, break of that increasing trend line uh, that we saw up until uh, a couple of weeks ago. So one to look out for, you know, essentially we're saying there's less people active, transferring less volume, and there's also a lower institutional participation rate. So how is this affecting the miners, the integral part uh, of the Bitcoin ecosystem? Well, miners are suffering a little bit, uh, but not hugely considering that their marginal cost is so low. I think the marginal cost of mining a Bitcoin today is around nine and a half, ten thousand dollars and with prices you know, sitting at the $37,000 mark, you're making about $27,000 um, per Bitcoin. So that's really you know, not a bad return on your investment. That said, uh, miners' revenues have halved over the last few weeks from around the $65, uh, $70 million mark down to around $30 million. Looking back towards uh, the, the halving that happened uh, in May of last year, um, you can see that the levels today are significantly higher than they were uh, pre-halving levels. So the network's not in any trouble. 
uh, miners are still having a great time making a lot of money, uh, just a slightly less money than they were a few weeks ago. You can also see there in gold the uh, percentage of those revenues miners are making that are attributable to fees, and fees similar to what we saw with addresses have been on a steady upward trend as the bull market was running, uh, and now we're seeing a drop off in demand, um, which is leading to fees to fall as well. Okay, another indicator that we like to track at ByteTree is the miners rolling inventory or MRI. Now MRI, when it's at 100%, means that miners are actually selling uh, inventory into the market. So they are um, offloading uh, more than they are generating. Uh, and when it's below 100%, it means that they're building up their inventory. So MRI has dropped below 100%, meaning miners are building up their inventory um, for the first time this year. The last time we really saw this sort of behavior um, was you know, actually way back in, in June, July for any sustained period of time. There was that short period at the end of December, but that was you know, a one-off big sell from a miner, um, the largest, one of the largest that we'd actually seen at the time. Uh, whereas now, you know, if you look at the last few months and the trend there, you can see that whilst miners had been offloading inventory through that bull market, we've now had a steady decline all the way down to 100%, meaning that they're building up their inventory. Our experience in the market tells us that this is in response to a weaker market bid. They expect that they can get a better price further down the line and so aren't interested in selling right now. So look, it's not all bad news. While the overall network demand might be falling, it is great to see that Bitcoin um, is having an increased um, use case within the um, decentralized finance space. So one example of that here is looking at Wrap Bitcoin, WBTC, which is in green. Uh, and this is the total balances uh, or amount of Wrap Bitcoin uh, on the Ethereum network. And it's just continued to grow uh, regardless of what price has been doing or, or on-chain flows or anything else. Uh, and now there's 1.12% of all Bitcoin have landed on the Ethereum network. And you can see that it really is relentless. We don't know exactly where this Bitcoin is being used, um, but Anecdotal evidence suggests that it's going into Polygon on the, on the Matic network, or previously the Matic network, and being used within that sort of DeFi ecosystem. Okay, very nice piece of news to end on here is just to show the Lightning network capacity. Lightning network, of course, is that layer two solution that Bitcoin uh, will allow Bitcoin to be spent at a much, sorry, sent at a much lower uh, cost per transaction. And here in orange, uh, you're looking at the uh, total capacity in Bitcoin terms um, from the beginning of 2018 until today. And you can see that that is really on a great trajectory from the last sort of beginning of this year, uh, where we reached a new all time high and it's continued to increase. And it's actually starting to head parabolic, which is very, very positive. Uh, why is it rising so fast? Well, I can give you two great examples. One is in El Salvador where we're seeing an increased participation of, um, of, of users uh, on the Strike app, which is a, a Lightning Network application that really makes it much easier for individuals to uh, transact over the Lightning Network. Um, and the other one is uh, Jack Dorsey's support at Bitcoin Miami just a few days ago, saying that the uh, Bitcoin Network is the most important technology uh, in the world and he wants to work on it. Um, with his full focus and attention and that lightning is an essential part of that. So look, overall, short term, yes, the network's looking a bit ropey. That institutional in investment that drove uh, the price in Q4 uh, in particular has started to sort of uh, level off a bit to, to steady off. Um, but uh, the development continues. You know, Bitcoin's not going anywhere. It's a terribly, terribly exciting time to be involved. So with that, I'll end there and uh, we'll see you again next week.